Hello friends, in this lecture we will learn about ARP and reverse ARP. So what is ARP? ARP is Address Resolution Protocol and reverse ARP is again Reverse Address Resolution Protocol. So we will understand about it. So what happens is when you are on a local area network, so we operate on two addresses for a host. So one is your logical address, okay, for example, your IP address. And then we also have a physical address, which is the MAC address of six bytes. So how to make a relationship between these two addresses and in this ARP and reverse ARP help. So if I know the IP address of one machine and I want to know the physical address for it, I will use ARP. Okay. And when I know the physical address and I want to find its IP address, I will use reverse ARP. Okay. And why is that needed? So let's try to see. And these both ARP and reverse ARP are they are in the network layer protocol okay so let's try to see so first we will learn about arp so arp associates an ip address with its physical address okay so for example there will be a table which will tell 132.28.36.5 has a physical address okay so it's a2 B5 38 21 00 FF. Okay, so these are so six bytes of MAC address. So this is your IP address, and then it gives your physical address. So this mapping is being done by your ARP protocol. And why is it helpful? Because when we are sending packets on a LAN then we use we are sending frames and that use the mac address for communication so the topics that we will discuss now for arp is the packet format because it's a packet where we have what are the things that we need what are the fields that will be used for communication okay so it's something like i'm talking to you and i'm asking your name so there are some questions some field will be there and what operation it does what is the encapsulation and so on so let's try to see with one very good example so there is a system a and this is a lan okay so this is a lan there is a system a and a sense it a wants to know that what is the MAC address of system B which has IP address 141.23.56.23 okay so it wants to know its MAC address so that it can send now frames directly to it using that MAC address okay so and because their communication on a LAN takes place using the frames where you have to know the mac address and i don't know that okay so for example i come to a class okay and then i need to broadcast to everyone that who is some person john or something like that then the i will tell to everyone in the class who is john and only john will raise his hand that okay i am john okay and all other people will be sitting okay he will stand up and tell that he is john so when i ask that okay what is the mac address for this ip address so here i don't know if this machine a b c or this system b okay so this is not b this is d this a d c or b which has IP address 141.23.56.23 so when this question or request goes to each one of them then 
B will find that okay this address belongs to me this IP address and now he will reply back and only he will reply back others don't need to reply because they are not system B with IP address this so it's something again the mapping is if he is there he will only stand up and say okay I'm John others will not say okay by standing up that okay I'm not John this will create too much of noise similarly if they are sending reply that I'm not this IP address then that is useless okay and that will add to congestion and collision in the Ethernet so what happens B replies that okay I am this particular IP address and he replies with its six bytes of MAC address which is a4 colon 6 C f4 five nine eight three a b okay so this is how you write the mac address and in the human readable format so okay this is the first byte we write in hexadecimal then we put a colon we write 60 which is next byte f4 then 59 then 83 and a b okay so r is reply is unicast and our request is broadcast i ask to each student in the class only john replies that yes he is john and his role number is that particular one now let's come to the art packet okay so what are there in my request so let's say i'm sending by mail to each student that who is john so what other things i will write so similarly the per system is asking about the hardware address of particular IP address so what he needs to write he will send also his sender hardware address his own IP address which is four bytes this is six bytes then he doesn't know what is the target hardware address so this is not filled this is filled this is filled he don't he doesn't know that he will not fill this up and he know the he knows the IP address so he fills this and by reading this one particular thing the system B will know that okay I have to reply with my hardware address but then again a few more question remains that how will he know that okay this packet is an ARP request okay so that will be from this field okay so it's kind of a letter that you receive in that a lot of header messages are there so it tells that okay protocol type is ARP okay is this a request for ARP or an ARP reply because it can be an ARP request or reply so I will say no it's a request and what is the length of the protocol hardware length hardware type and so on so these informations are given so I will first see protocol type is ARP it's a request so I will check that okay is this asking for my IP address yes I'm John or system B so I will reply with my hardware address and that reply will be ARP reply whom to send so I will send to the senders hardware address MAC address okay so this is there next so this is how the encapsulation happens so this is the data you are the source address destination address and so on now this one is interesting okay so let's try to see this one so what are the cases for using ARP? So case one, okay, what is the target IP address? So I am on a particular LAN, okay? And the other host, the receiver also, whom I want to send some frames, he is also on the same LAN. I know his IP address, but I don't know his frame and uh, his MAC address. So if I don't know his MAC address, I cannot forward packet to him. So what do I do in the LAN, whoever are there, I will send a broadcast ARP request saying that, okay, this is the IP address of host and I want to find his MAC address. So this broadcast request goes to all the machines, but the particular host only replies with his IP address. This was the thing we saw also. Next one is I'm sending a host want to send a packet to some other network okay so if you are sending to other network it must pass through this gateway router and to send to a gateway router also i need to know the mac address of that particular router okay through the port to which i am connected so again i will send that okay what is the 
MAC address of this particular router. So again, I will send a broadcast ARP request and this router will send a broad and unicast ARP reply. So broadcast is to everyone, unicast is to just a single user. Then the next one. Okay, so now there is a LAN in between. So a router receives a packet to be sent to a host on another network. So this there was a LAN here. There is a LAN here. Okay. So this LAN person LAN 1 and this is let's say LAN 5. So a host in LAN 1 wants to send to a host B in LAN 5. Okay. So host A. So first he needs to send here. So this router is connected through a LAN to this router. So this router needs to know the MAC address of the router for which is connected to LAN B. So it will send a broadcast request to the router's IP address. Okay, to which IP address saying okay which particular router has this IP address? Please send me the his MAC address so that I can forward you the packets. This is the third case. Last case is this let's say this router receives the packet forwarded by a in lan1 now what if he doesn't know the who is b what is the mac address of b then he also again sends an ARP request he broadcasts it to all the host then host with that particular ip address replies okay i am this person and he sends his mac address so that router can send the packets forwarded by a in LAN 1. So this is about the four cases of ARP which is interesting. Okay. Next, so ARP request is broadcast and ARP reply is unicast. So host, so this just tells you, okay, so move forward. Now we will come to what is the, how is it stored, okay, cache. So we will solve a few problems to understand this ARP. So there is a cache table, okay, there is a table where this IP address and the particular MAC address are stored. This ARP package, it's a software package, so it also contains queues, different queues for different MAC addresses to which packets are to be sent. And let's and a cache control how we update it how we modify it and so on so this is there okay let's try to see so there is the ip packet comes to the this ip layer okay then there is an output module so now ip packet goes to these different queues okay and these queues are for different mac addresses okay so if i'm sending to mac address one it will be there in q1 okay something like that if i'm sending it to mac address 5 it will be in q5 and then all the ip packets are forwarded this is the cache table i can receive an arp request i can receive so this we can also get a request arp request reply so let's try to see it with questions okay so let's try to see so this is a cache table for our example. So here you see there is a state, there is a queue number, number of attempts, timeout, the IP address and its hardware address. Okay, so these things are there in the table. So state, let's try to see. State R means that, okay, I already know that, okay, for this IP address, you have this particular MAC address and it's resolved. And this queue number tells you that, okay, if you are forwarding packet to this particular IP address, you need to send it into queue number five. This is saying that okay, it's pending. It means I have sent an ARP request to find what is the MAC address for this particular address. I have made two attempts. The packets that are coming to be forwarded to this particular IP address are there in queue number two but I still don't know its MAC address so I cannot forward those packets. So P is pending again so it also not knowing IP address MAC address for 201.11.56.7 F okay so it says that okay so it's now time so nothing is there 
so let's try to see so we have a few interesting questions here so first one is now what happens our ARP output module receives an IP datagram okay so it gets an IP packet with destination address this 114.5.7.89 it checks the cache table now it will check the cache table and if it will see that do I have the MAC address for this one if it has it can forward it to that particular queue but if it doesn't exist okay so if it exists the state will be R okay it extracts the hardware address it can then extract the hardware address and send the packet to the data link layer for transmission so let's try to see so what was the IP address it was 114.5789 so 114.5789 is there so it could find it state is our result so I will send the packet with because I know the MAC address okay so let's try to see so this is fine next it says 20 second later now what happens our output module again receives an IP datagram from the IP layer with destination address this so now again so now we have to check does this IP address is it present in the cache table if it is then it is fine but if it is not then what will I do and let's try to check if it is the 116 1.7.22 so 116.107 there is nothing like 116 here so that is not there so what they will do now he will because I don't know the MAC address I will send an ARP request and I will put an entry in the table for this IP address but I don't know its MAC address now so I will put a pending in the state okay and I will make a queue for it so now what happens let's try to see this is 116 1.7 so where is it I have a entry now in my cache table I said that this is my attempt one to find its MAC address and the queue number is 23 it is in pending state because I don't know the MAC address now then what happens 15 seconds later so again 20 seconds later that request came now again 15 seconds later ARP input module receives ARP packet with target address 188.11.8.71 the module checks the table and okay so let's try to see 188.11.8 188.11.8.71 okay this is the IP address and let's see so ARP input model receives a ARP packet with this so it is receiving an ARP reply so now it says that okay now I have got a reply for this so I know its MAC address so it is resolved now and then there is a timeout value that okay it will be there for 900 seconds or something like that and then I know from the ARP reply that okay its MAC address is this so it is updated here so what was the address 18811 so 18811 so this is there and its MAC address I found I put a timeout like this okay and it is in Q18 so whatever packets are coming to it it will be forwarded to Q18 next 25 seconds later the cache control module updates every entry okay so we started at time 0 then there was 25 seconds after 15 seconds then 20 seconds was there 15 seconds 35 seconds plus 25 overall it became 60 seconds okay so cash cash control updates every entry so what will happen now the timeout will decrease for each value so because it has passed 60 seconds since the first update so all the time out will be decreased by 60 okay only for the last one which was just updated 25 seconds ago okay because that entry was added so it was decreased by just 25 seconds so you can see that here all of the entries are decreasing so it's 840 initially it was 900 this was 450 it became 390 and so on this was 900 after 25 seconds it became 875 now we will just look at reverse up arp it is reverse of it so now what happens is that now I know my physical address but I want to know my IP address so it goes to the reverse app server I tell that my IP address this is my physical address it will provide you the IP address 
so this is therefore reverse arc operation so i hope you understand this concept of arc and reverse arc it's very important so thanks a lot